Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad you're here. They have finally arrived. Breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams. This is a feature that faculty have been asking me about for a long time. Everybody can use breakout rooms. When you have a large group of people, you're not going to facilitate really good conversation if you have more than five or six people all trying to talk at once. So one of the things we can do, especially as instructors, is to break our students into small groups and have them discuss something and then bring it back to the larger group. Well, breakout rooms are the perfect way of doing this. But you need a way to manage those breakout rooms, to go and visit each of them, to help facilitate the discussion, to see what's happening amongst the participants. All of that is now available. I woke up this morning, so last night I was filming some videos. I woke up this morning and there was a new icon in the Teams meeting. I'm like, what's this all about? And I hovered above it and it said breakout rooms and I was super excited. So I've been spending the whole morning playing around with the breakout rooms and I wanna share this with you right away today. I'm going to be doing more on breakout rooms and how to effectively use them, but here's my introduction to them. I think you'll find them very useful, and I think you'll find this introduction useful just to get started. If it is, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and uh, let's go have a look at breakout rooms. I can hardly wait. Breakout rooms or study rooms is something that a lot of people have been asking about for uh, to have put into Teams. And I've done a number of videos where I've talked about using channels as a way of doing this, but it has become so much better. Uh, when I woke up this morning and saw this, I got right into looking at them and they're fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and start a meeting up here. And you'll notice that I have the new interface here. So I've got a little bit of a new style to the to the interface. And I had this yesterday. I'm just going to mute my mic so I don't get feedback. Um, but what happened is this morning, and we'll mute my camera as well. So I'll join the meeting here. I'll start a new meeting. Is we now have a new icon. It's just going to pop up. There it is. Breakout room icon. And that's going to allow me to create breakout rooms. But to have breakout rooms, I need some participants. So let's have some folks come in and join this meeting. Okay, so here we are. A lot of folks have come in and joined the meeting. So we have uh, all, of, all of the individuals have come in to join the meeting. And now I'm going to go into the breakout rooms. And when I go into the breakout rooms, you'll notice that it says, how many rooms do you need? So I can choose the number of rooms. And you can have a lot of rooms, up to 50 breakout rooms. So that'll handle even large classes. If I had 60 or 70 students, I could even create little partners of two. So there's a lot of breakout rooms. And then it will automatically create that assignment for you. So it'll just randomly put people into those rooms. Or you can manually put participants into the breakout rooms if you have specific groups. And that's really quite interesting. So let's go ahead. I'm going to create, uh, let's create two breakout rooms just because I don't have a lot of participants. So it's going to put two to three participants per room. And you'll notice it'll assign five people into two rooms. And you'll notice I have one, two, three, four, five individuals. Now there is a bit of a gotcha here. So I'll create the rooms. Um, and the gotcha here is that sometimes I will not have, I'll have participants that are not automatically assigned to a breakout room. And that's because they're either on a device or they're in a version of Teams that hasn't been updated. So if you ever see anybody that doesn't get assigned to a breakout room, that's probably the case. And they'll have to go ahead and upgrade their Microsoft Teams. For the purposes of my experimentation, I actually have this user is using a web interface on a small Raspberry Pi. This user here is using an iOS device. Uh, this person's using a laptop. This person's using a laptop. And this person's using a Surface. So I have a number of different devices. Just I wanted to mix it up. But when I was first experimenting with it, both my Clark user and my Bruce Wayne user were not able to join the breakout rooms. I'm like, what's going on? And there was a little icon. They were. It said they're either on a device or on a software version that wouldn't allow them to join. So be cautious of that and make sure you're keeping things up to date. So you can see here right now the rooms aren't running. All the participants have been assigned and you can see that I've got, you know, in this case here, I've got three, uh, 
I've got Clark, Arthur, and Diana, and here I have Victor and Bruce, and they're all assigned to the breakout rooms. I can start the rooms. I could even add another room if I have other participants, or I want to create maybe another room that will be, I don't know, a synthesis room, whatever the case may be. But then when I start the rooms, now I open up the rooms, and all of my participants are now going to go into their breakout rooms. So it takes a few moments and they'll be all put into their breakout rooms. So you can see that they all disappeared and you can see that I've got these rooms here. They're, they're open. Now as the organizer, I can pop into this room and I can see who's there. They can see that they're all in a meeting. I can go into this room. I can see that they're in the meeting. Uh, if I go into and I can collapse those. If you have a lot of rooms, you might want to not have them all open. But it's a great way to see who's in which room. And of course, one of the things that we may need to do is get the attention of everybody who's in a meeting room and call them back to the main room. So I can go here and I can make an announcement. So if I fire off an announcement, I can say, you know, breakout sessions will end in five minutes. So I can say, oh, I could spell today. So breakout, uh, breakout sessions will end in five minutes and that goes to all of the different rooms. So as a participant, and I'll just grab another screen over here. So I'm just gonna grab, this as a participant screen. So this here is, uh, Diana's logged in here. So Diana's currently logged in here and you can see an announcement just came in and there was an important breakout sessions will end in five minutes. So that announcement was here. And you can see that on the web interface, uh, Diana here is working with Arthur and they can, you know, be uh, doing whatever they do. So for example, if, uh, if Diana says here, okay, I want to go in and I want to, you know, uh, put notes in here. I can go into full screen, raise a hand, keypad, all the things we would expect. Uh, Diana can go in there and she could share her screen, she could share a whiteboard. So in this case here, I've got her working with Arthur using a whiteboard and just her and Arthur will be sharing this whiteboard. I don't know if I click that properly. Go into the whiteboard and it loads the whiteboard. And in this case here, you can see there's the whiteboard. So just her and the participants in her meeting room are currently sharing this particular whiteboard. And uh, I'll just move that off to the side, stop presenting here go back into the chat. So that's an example of what the participant would see. This is actually uh, what the participant would see in a web interface on a Raspberry Pi. I did another video where I used a Raspberry Pi to show how it works with Teams. And that's where, you know, yesterday when I, when I did that video, I didn't see the breakout rooms. It was only this morning when I was doing some additional work, I saw that uh, there was this new icon for the breakout room. So it's fantastic. Definitely something to explore. So you can make the announcement, you can call people back. You can close down a breakout room or rename the room. So renaming can be handy. So room one, room two. So maybe I'm gonna have this particular room, they're gonna talk about supplies. So I can rename that room to the supplies. And maybe, so take a few moments. And then this room here, I'm gonna rename. And maybe I'll rename this one to uh, equipment. Uh, equipment are supplies. We'll call this the fuel room. Okay, they're going to talk about fuel for our exploration of the outer planets and uh, the supply room here. We're going to have them talk about supplies. You can go in, select all of the participants in a meeting. So you can go in and just select everybody and see who's in the meeting here. Um, and then if you have additional participants, when they come in, they will not be assigned to a room. You can add them into one of the rooms simply by choosing the participant and then pulling them into that new room. Now, of course, one of the things you want to be able to do as an instructor is move between these rooms and help uh, spark conversation and facilitate conversation and see how things are going in the room. Well, you can do that. So what you can do is if you right click, you can actually join that room. So now I'm actually joined into the room with, in this case here, Clark, Diana, Arthur. So now we're, we're in this room here, the three of us, and let's just uh, to show you what can happen here. So this, this is Diana here. So if she goes in and she shares her whiteboard, so she's sharing her whiteboard here. So take a few moments for that to go in. So she's sharing her whiteboard and you'll notice that on my screen, right? Let's just pop in here. Ah pop in here. So she's sharing her whiteboard. I'll go back to my team meeting. You can see here we collaborate on the whiteboard. So here is me 
and here is her. And so if she goes in and she puts in something on the whiteboard, I'll just move this off to the side, you can see that it appears on my screen. And if I put something in the whiteboard, let's choose a different color, I put a circle, you can see that that appears on the screen of all of the participants in that meeting. So we'll just minimize that. I'll go back into, this is the fuel meeting. So in this case here, I can go ahead and leave that fuel meeting and go back to here. Notice I'm on hold because I was, I was in that meeting. So I can go in here. I can go in, I can join that room. Again, I could join this room or I can just basically, I could, well, I could resume. So I'm, I'm back into the meeting. But in this case here, you'll notice I'm no longer in the participants meeting. I'm floating around and I can say, okay, well, let's see how we're doing with supplies. I'll go ahead and join that room. Talk about supplies with Bruce and Victor. I'll return out of that room so I can come back here. So that's a very powerful way of just to quickly, you know, again, pop in, join in. How are you guys doing? Are you still working on the whiteboard? Yes, you are seeing everything that's going on here. Okay, I could share my screen if I need to present something to them. It takes a few seconds just to pop in. Again, I could say, have you ever thought about triangles? So I could say, think about triangles, talk about that. And they're all blah, 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 triangles. I return out and then I can go in and I can join this room and I could say, they're talking about triangles. Maybe you guys should talk about circles. So come come out of here. So a lot of cool features there. It really is useful. I like the fact that it randomizes participants. I like the fact that I can pop between the different rooms. I like the idea that if uh, somebody comes in late, I can assign them to a specific room. I can rename the rooms. There's a lot of value in breakout rooms and it's something that I intend to use quite a lot. So there they are, breakout rooms. A feature I've wanted for a long time, I know a lot of you have wanted for a long time. This can be used in classroom environments. This can be used in business environments around projects. This is a fantastic feature that is going to really increase the value of Microsoft Teams. And it's a pretty valuable product as it is right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and here's some more videos that you might want to watch from the channel. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.